We're here to answer your game, gaming, or game night questions. All right, so Monday afternoon, while working, I was listening to podcasts. Yes, for those of you paying attention, I am still way behind. I'm currently working through shows from August 2020 with 600 and some still to go. And that's with purging a couple podcasts. But at the time, I happened to be listening to an episode of Board Game Blitz, where they did a really unique top 10 list that I thought would be fun to recreate here. So big props to Board Game Blitz for inspiring our topic tonight and for being an awesome show that promises to be much shorter than any episode we ever release. I strongly recommend checking out the show and hanging out with Crystal and Ambi. So here's how this top 10 is going to work. We're going to go to Board Game Geek and take a look at the top 1,000 games. We're going to go and we're going to look at the games rated from 1,000 to 901 and pick our favorite game from that li- from that 100. Mm-hmm. Then move on to the games rated 801 to 900 and pick one game each <laughs> all the way until we get to the Board Game Geek Top 100. All right, so starting with number 10, which is a game on Board Game Geek that as of yesterday, because these do change, is ranked between 901 to 1,000. So this sounded fun. And then I opened up Board Game Geek and looked, and um, well, I was just in shock. Like we are looking at the the best of the worst, right? We're we're starting pretty low. A thousands, like when you talk ten, ten lists, you don't tend to talk top one thousand lists, right? So I can't believe how many amazing games, like like not just good game, amazing games, fall as far back as nine hundred one to one thousand. Like stuff there, like Mission Red Planet, Rise of Augustus, which I love to call uh, Roman Bingo, Strasbourg, one of my favorite games, Merlin, a Stefan Feld with lots of rondels, Fleet, I, Fleet is still one of the tightest games I've ever played, Whistle Stop, Runebound Second Edition, and more. But out of all of those, I one name stood out right away. I picked it, then found all these others. Like, no, sorry, they don't compare. And that is Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunters. This game is amazing. This is the best kids game we've ever played and a game that as adults, we still enjoyed to play. And I finally got the Hidden Cellar expansion, which makes it even better. No, I did not put any expansions on this list. I'm just pointing out Graves Fighting Treasure wins with the expansion. It's even better. Now, I actually expected more games I've played to be way down at this section. I'm not exactly, you know, your hot new and your, uh, or even hot old game gamer. Yep. But there were actually only a couple. Still, though, it's really hard to go wrong with Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters. Mm-hmm. I've enjoyed playing it with adults and kids, and it ended up on my list as well. So this was amusing. So one of the things I did with Sean is I had to write him because Sean has not, does not have the game experience I do. Hasn't played a ton of games. He's played, well, to be honest, compared to the average person, he's probably has played a ton of games. <laughs> but but in general, compared to most hobby board gamers, he hasn't tried a lot of the old classics and that. And I was a little concerned. I'm like, can you even find one per every thousand? He's like, oh, I should be able to. And thankfully he was easily able to actually, like it, it wasn't as much of a problem as I thought it might be. Yeah, luckily your collection has uh, enabled quite a large uh, number of games to be played yes. from this list. All right, moving on to number nine. This is ranked 801 to 900 on Board Game Geek and features a ton more great games. Personal favorites like Ice Cool, Letter Jam, Hey That's My Fish, Ticket to Ride New York, Istanbul the Dice Game, Battlecon War of Indides, a game that makes it feel like you're playing Street Fighter with board games, World's Fair 1893, recently reprinted to be more inclusive, Valley of the Kings, and well, Quirkle. And I got to say, I was really close to putting Quirkle on because Quirkle is such an amazing mass market game. It's the mass market game I like to show and shove in board gamers faces and say, look, you can buy good games at Walmart. But the one I am going to go with this time is actually Black Fleet, which I didn't realize at the time of picking it. It looks like is totally out of print. This is a pick up and deliver pirate game that I loved because it featured plastic little ships that actually hold cubes which is something i hadn't seen before now if you check our review from last week there's an evolution of that mechanic but i loved it and you get to play both a merchant ship and a pirate at the same time so you're trying to get your merchant ships through the channels while attacking other people with your pirates and if the pirates sink a ship they get to steal the treasure but it's not worth points unless they bury it on an island comes with metal coins which is something back then is just unheard of i am a huge fan of black fleet 
And for me, while there are a few fun games in this question, with Letter Jam being one I've recently played and we've reviewed <laughs> on the channel, uh, and then there's games like Jaws, which while I enjoyed, I just didn't feel had the legs and, and was never <laughs> really going to play again. Uh, and unlike Mo, I'm not a huge lover of Dex games, so mm -hmm. Ice Cool, while fun, wasn't my selection. Uh, and while I generally will always say I don't like Ticket to Ride, mm -hmm. Ticket to Ride New York is just the right amount of Ticket to Ride. Mm -hmm. It's a quick, easy version that doesn't make me cringe the way someone <laughs> suggesting I play Ticket to Ride does. Now, is it a train game? Because there are no actual... <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Tune in to previous episodes for that discussion. All right, number eight. 701 to 800. Some of my favorites in this grouping, and I'm going to have to cut these down. I can't list all my favorites at this point already. But Attica, Adrenaline, Wasteland Express Delivery Service, one of the best produced games I've ever seen with a full box insert. Like, you want to see production quality? Wow. Pictomania, Thunder Alley, an actually good NASCAR game for someone who hates NASCAR. Uh, Gentist, Unfair, and more. Now, I am really tempted to go with Concept, which was on this list, because I still think it's one of the best party games of all time. But you know what? Uh, there is a style of game I love and Sean loves, and that is deck building. And my favorite deck builder still to this day is Core Worlds. I love how epic that game is and how much engine building there is. Where you start off as these weak space barbarians, slowly building up your fleet and army as you move closer to the center of the universe and eventually conquer the Core Worlds. So this was a really tough grouping for me, as among other things, DC Deck Builder was included in it, which I do love, but I don't love all of it. Uh, we've mm -hmm. talked in the past how Teen Titans is, of course, the fav my favorite version of it. But what is on that list is Can't Stop, which is one of those games that I just play all the time and mm -hmm. would happily sit with anyone and play any time, really. And I found as I was going through this list, those were the games that I drifted to it was that mm. game while it may not be the best game ever and i may not be the cool hobby gamer for loving it it's that game that if someone puts it down in front of me yeah i'm gonna play i don't care who you are where i am that is a game i still i need to get a copy like a physical copy of can't stop at some point because like it is it's a great game what i was wondering is did you notice if teen titans was on the list is it I further up or? i didn't see it i'm wondering if list. it's below yeah I didn't see it myself. All right, moving on to number seven, 601 to 700. Uh, kind of out of place seeming are great games like 878 Vikings, which to me just should be ranked 878. Just, you know, if you're going to play with the board game geek ratings, there's one. There's a goal. Get get Vikings 878 rated 878. It's close enough at this point. Uh, Hyperborea, the, the bag builder disguised as a thematic fantasy game. Red 7, which we talked about on the show many times. Lords of Zidit with its awesome program movement system. Blockus, Yido, XCOM, The Mind, Villainous, Among the Stars, Reef Ascension. There's so many. I actually found this one to be the hardest yet. This There were so many games here. And again, I almost went with Blockus for the same reason I almost went with Oracle and its universal appeal. But, you know, I, at this point, I think enough people played it. I decided to go with one of the only games in my collection that I bought twice. The, the, it's a game that went out of print, got reprinted, and I actually bothered to go out and buy the new printing after trying it at the local game store, and that is St. Petersburg. This is an engine-building card game about building the city of Paint Petersburg, very much a card-driven Euro. Uh, it's one of the old Aaliyah classics that has come out. Uh, the new printing even added a new trade phase, which I think is an improvement on the game and just made it better. So my number seven is St. Petersburg. All right, well, another tough one, as I could have easily picked Ascension mm -hmm. uh, or even a game like Reef. But again, you know, I play Ascension digitally and I play Ascension mm -hmm. digitally for a reason. I actually can't imagine trying to manage all those cards in person it's mm -hmm. just become too big to be a reasonable physical board game anymore uh and what i did see is cribbage which i've been playing with my parents and my kids for decades and again it's one of those games that i'm just always gonna say yes to 
All right, I'm going to interrupt before I get to number six. So there's a little bit of confusion over exactly what we're pulling from here and where we're getting getting the game. So what we've done is we have taken the Board Game Geek Top 1000. And the way Board Game Geek is set up is it shows 100 items per page. So if you go to page 10 of the Board Game Geek collection, you get the games that are ranked 901 to 1000. So that's their, their overall rating on Board Game Geek. Well, we're looking at that page only. So only 901 to 1000 going out of those 100 games, what's our favorite? Right. And then we're going back a page and we're looking at 801 to 900 and going out of those 100 games, what's our favorite? So it's not our top 10 games overall out of all 1,000 together. We're grouping them by groups of 100, which is to me what made it interesting. Because I can easily, otherwise, I just make a list of my top 10 games. Yeah, absolutely. And this doesn't necessarily, uh, it generally is for Mo because he owns everything, but it's not necessarily <laughs> games in your collection. No. Uh, again, you know, cribbage is, is one of those things where it's like, I, I you know, I, yeah, I think I do have a couple of cribbage boards around, but it's one of those things where it's your favorite game, not even necessarily one you own in your collection. Yeah, it doesn't have to be in your collection. Everything I mentioned here is in my collection. Uh, spoilers, they're all behind me, actually. I went and gathered <laughs> each one of them. Uh, they are all behind me. Don't look if, if you're here live. All right, so moving on to number six. So, again, this is games that are ranked from 500 to 1 to 600 on Board Game Geek. And which of the ones... I, I think is best. And this is at the point. So I actually started a thousand work forward when, when I created this list and it is not getting any easier. Is it like, like every list is just bigger and bigger. And I'm like, wow, this has some of my all time favorite games. Um, Ashes, rise of the Phoenix born shipyard. Oh, I love shipyard. I need to get that to the table more often. Rondells and Rondells and Rondells, the original space Hulk, like, like the 1980s. That's where these gene stealers come from. Space Hulk, uh, Tash Kalar. That is one I need to get Sean. We need to put that on the list because Tash Kalar reminds me of the Duke. It's an abstract arena game. Eminent Domain, probably my second favorite deck builder. Arc Rate, one of the best brain burners I've ever played. Takedo, how many games of Takedo have the three of us played together? Wallenstein, like uh, the, the original German. Zhang Wo, a game about founding China. And Valeria Card Kingdoms, the game that's still better than Space Base and better than um, Machi Koro. But I have to go with our favorite two-player game of all time the game i play the most with my wife uh, a game i can't wait to play again over some pints at a brew pub and that is the duke a chess like abstract strategy game where the moves are on the pieces but when you move you flip them over to the other side and it may change what's there so it was hard for me not to pick the Duke. And I think it's based on, on a lot of my other picks. I think most people would expect me to have picked the Duke. And while I do like it and I will play it all the time, mm -hmm. the game that I want to play all the time is Valeria Card Kingdoms because yeah. I really haven't had the chance to play that anywhere near as much as I would like to. Uh, another standout in this group that I really enjoyed was the Networks. Mm -hmm. um, and and I mean, Eminent Domain, again, is, is another great one. Yeah, I, I oh, Valeria. Like my my first thought when I looked is I'm like Wallenstein. Oh, Valeria. Oh, Emin Domain. But Wallenstein. But Valeria. Valeria is so good. But I had to go with the Duke. Like, like if, if the Duke wasn't there, it would have been a much harder choice. Right. But seeing the Duke, and I'm like, no, sorry, it's got to be the Duke. Heck, even some people in the chat called that one before I said it. <laughs> All right, we're in the top five. We are halfway through. We're looking at games ranked 401 to 500. Interestingly, I found this one actually easier than the last few. Like, there are some great games here, stuff I really dig, like Francis Drake, Alhambra, Chicago Express, Hammer of the Scots, a fantastic block war game from Columbia, uh, Star Wars X Wing with the program movement, which actually like felt like an actual Star Wars space battle, Last Will, which is uh, B Brewster's Millions, the board game, Ingenious, The Colonists, Thurns and Taxis, Fox in the Forest, Bean, Imhotep, Junk Art, Stuff Fables. Oh, there's so many good ones but i'm gonna go with a game that i have said many times is by far the best out of print the biggest hidden gem the most difficult to find game that i love is a Gizia. except every other time i said that is now wrong because stronghold games now brought this one back through a successful kickstarter under the name agizia shifting sands which includes the game i know and love on one side of the board and a new supposedly improved variant I'll admit I'm still happy with the original. I didn't feel the need to pick this up because I love the version I have. But you know what? If anyone local has it, if one stores open up, I would love to try 
the new version of Egesia, and maybe it'll become like St. Petersburg with me, and I'll buy another copy. Well, it was a tough call up against Sushi Go, but no, really, Imhotep is just a great mm -hmm. game and kind of won this uh, bracket pretty easily for me, be despite a lack of competition, uh, or despite a lot of competition. Yeah. Uh, Imhotep is just so flexible. The number mm -hmm. of games you can play without repeating the oh. same game, like the, the variety in it, even yeah. before you add the expansion in, uh, was so great. It's just a fantastic game that's got that replayability that really helps drive a game to be that much better for mm -hmm. me. What I love about that one too is it's a great gateway game because it's not complex, but it really shows off how different some hobby board games are. Absolutely. Like there is nothing like Monopoly, Sorry, Clue, or Trouble in Imhotep. It's completely different from all of those. And I love the look on people's faces who aren't really board gamers playing it and going, wow, board games can be so much more. Yep. Number four, 301 to 400. At this point, there's so many games on the list. Uh, like, uh, it's even hard to find a small amount to highlight before getting to my final answer without just talking for half an hour about the great, great games. These are the best of the best of this for me. Medirio, Biblos, Battle Lore, my favorite Stefan Feld, Amerigo, Chinatown, the pure negotiation game, Glenmore, Macau, San Juan, Gizmos, Clash of Cultures, Blood Bowl Team Manager. In the Year of the Dragon, another Feld. Actually, there's a lot of Felds in this particular group. This is like the Feld section. Though my final answer isn't a Feld or even a Euro. Instead, it's the best dexterity game ever, Pitch Car. I have had more fun playing Pitch Car than most games I own. It's always a great time. I have everything published for it, except for the loop, which I had so planned on trying to get at Origins two years in a row now, but that didn't happen. I'm so close to having a complete collection. Uh, this one, it turns out I need to play a lot more from this particular 100 games. Uh, I didn't have a lot to pick from, and as a result, despite not being one of my top games uh, of this particular series even, mm. I went with Azul Stained Glass of Sintra because I just don't love pitch card no. as much as you, and really, any Azul is better than no Azul. There you go. Yeah, there's a lot of good games. We just copy what I put up there and throw that into play with Mo List, and then <laughs> we can get through. Them. All right, number three. We're in the top three. 201 to 300. Again, best games on the list, according to me. Pillars of the Earth. What a unique action selection system where you put all your meeple, well, that's their pawns, in a bag and draw them to figure out who gets to take actions first. Notre Dame, another fell. Democker, the recreation of German politics in board game form. You don't hear anyone talk about that game anymore. Survive, where you have a sinking island, a game that came out in the 70s is still popular. Hogwarts Battle, uh, the updated version of Mission Red Planet. Bruges, considered by many the best, Seffenfeld. Telestrations, one of the best party games ever made. Dungeon Lords, Hive, War Chest, Seasons. Oh, there's so many. Space Base, Isle of Sky. This, this was the hardest one yet. There are games here I love playing with my wife and games that I've laughed the most at while playing over any other game. Games that I made myself physically ill from laughing so much. I, I came really close to picking Dungeon Lords for this because it is such a fascinating, deep Euro game with such a cool theme, but it's not that accessible. So I decided to go with the diced based worker placement game, Alien Frontiers. This is an early Kickstarter success, uh, considered by many to be the first big board game Kickstarter that was successful. This game is extremely well balanced. It features dice based worker placement, which was new at the time. It's a really cool theme. So much fun. The only problem with this one is this is one of the few games out there that I don't think was actually improved by the expansions. I personally don't recommend bloating it by adding the expansion. Just stick to the base box. Well, this one I actually felt was really easy, though there are many great games at this level. Pulsar 2849 took it with War Chest being a strong mm -hmm. runner up and Telestrations always a great group party yeah. game. Now, I do need to play Aeon's End at some point, though, as I suspect it could, uh, from what I understand about it, could really be a, uh, a strong one to take it uh, in the future when I, if I ever do get it to play it. 
See, what I should probably do is right over here on my right is my copy of Aeon Zen in my two cell pile. <laughs> so I should probably take it out of there and just give it to Sean or at least play it with him once yeah, before yeah. then. My problem is Aeon Zen had a development curve that I, I found frustrating. So it was kickstarted by the original maker and it was put out with black and white art and it just kind of didn't look that great. And then they put out a new edition where they improved the art, but they put out about four different editions of this game in very short succession. Mm. And the version I own is one of the older ones. And I just feel like I have an old obsolete game when there's better shiny versions out there. And I took it as two choices. I could upgrade my game and get the shiny new stuff, or I could just never play it again, which I realize is kind of silly, but like they did make game improvements. They did balance the game. Like it's not just, they made it look prettier. And I just feel like my copy is the inferior one and which has driven me not to want to play it. Now, what I do want to try is Aeon's End Legacy, which is supposed to be amazing. But yeah, Aeon's End, the deck building game where you never shuffle your deck. That alone is really neat. Plus, it's cooperative. So you throw those two things in there and you've got a very unique system. Right. Down to number two. 101 to 200. Now, the first thing I noticed here is how many games... I had rank rankings for it because um, you're looking on the page and it really sticks out if you've made a comment or you have rankings. I'm like, wow, that's awfully full. So I went through and counted. I have played 60% of the games in this category. So favorites include Viticulture, Galaxy Trucker, Steam, Role Player, Tyrants of the Underdark, Raw, Village, Suburbia, Castles of Mad King, Ludwig, Chaos in the Old World, Vinhos Deluxe. Now, longtime fans of the show probably expected this game to be on the list at some point without even knowing where it was ranked on board game geek would be my guess and my number two game uh for the night is shogun i i don't know what it is about this game but like i see the name and i'm like oh i want to play shogun i had to go downstairs and i grabbed the box and i'm like huh i wonder if we can play shogun online I, I, there's something about that game that hooked me early uh interestingly playing the wallenstein version first but i prefer the theme of the samurais and i actually prefer the board which is a little more euro a little less in your face a little less uh knife fight than, than Shogun. So that's why Wallenstein didn't make them do this. But Shogun, like, if you ask me at the top of my head what's my favorite game of all time, it's Shogun. So it had to be on here somewhere. Well, it ends up, I am Board Game Geek. It's in the top 200. So enough other people seem to agree with me. I say this this was hands down the hardest of all of them. Hmm. Uh, and what I found was a lot of it depended on mood. Uh, there yeah. were games where depending on what mood I was in, this one, I could, I could see that this one would be my first choice, but you know, if I was feeling a little differently, I would probably go with that one as my first choice. Uh, great games like Jaipur, Azul Summer Pavilion, Suburbia and Star Realms, you know, mm -hmm. and not to mention Magic the Gathering, which while I haven't kept up with is still yeah. a fantastic game. Yet I decided to go with Zaya Legends of a Drift System. It's Fair. just such a great game. And again, great replay, replayability, the variety of, of game you get with that game. Uh, again, even before you add, add in the expansions, but then even more so oh, yeah. with those expansions, it's just got so much longevity to it as a game. Yeah, Zaya is a fantastic game, though. I do say that the the Embers of a Forsaken Star really does help. Like, I, I would never play it without. The other expansions, take them or leave them. But that is a great game. I, there were so many at this list. But oh, if you ask me, would you rather play Zaya or Shogun? I'm going to go with Shogun. All right, here we go. Number one. What game out of the Board Game Geek Top 100 is our favorite? Now, at this point, I played 75% of the game on the list, which doesn't surprise me at all. There was a point in time where I made sure to get all 100 games on the list and play all 100 games. And to be honest, I got up to 95 because there were some outer print war games I was never able to try. Uh, that This was going back about 10 years. At this point, I'm at 75%. And to be honest, the only reason for that is the new hotness. Because the way Board Game Geek is used recently is some hot new game comes out it ends up in the top 100 and then just drops off as time goes on often there's a game that isn't even published yet in the top 100 because so many people back the kickstarter and i don't know if it's a feeling of well i spent my 500 it's going to be good so i'm going to rate it a 10 i don't know whatever it is so that, that's the only reason i think that i haven't played more of this list like this list not talking about the new hotness so there are some good games in here are are like trajan Codenames, like, is there a better party game than Codenames? I used to think not, 
I know I still prefer, to be honest, I still prefer concept and um, illustrations, but overall appeal, Russian Railroads, my favorite engine builder, Patchwork, the game we play almost as much as the duel together, Battlestar Galactica, the exception to the rule, the one hidden trader game I love because it's a team-based game, not a one versus many. Um, Eclipse, Twilight Imperium, El Grande, Kalis, Keyflower, Dominant Species, Race for the Galaxy, the game I have now played more than 150 times, Through the Ages, Clans of Caldonia, Anar- or Anachrony, I almost said Anarchy, Power Grid, Caverna, oh, it's this whole list is amazing. I don't think that there's a game I hate on this top list. Now, I admit, I almost went with Dominant Species. That's another one for the Sean should play it at some point list. Like, that is one of the best heavy games i've ever played one of the best epic games but the time it takes to play like you're looking six to eight hours and the learning curve like this is a worker placements game based on some scientific stuff about evolution and climate change and like that there's just it just doesn't get played enough for me to put it as number one then i was really close to putting down orleon because to me you know what i i I think Orléans is actually better than Shogun. But for some reason, I hear Shogun and I get excited more than I get excited when I hear Orléans. When I hear Orléans, I'm like, yeah, yeah, Orléans is great. I know that one. But when I hear Shogun, I'm like, oh, I want to play Shogun. Let's play it. So Orléans was really close. But you know what? I think I had to take a page from Sean's earlier book and go with the game that gets played the most often. And that here, uh, since I got it, has been Terraforming Mars. Like right now, we're, 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 we call it the bellhops law, right? The best games in your collections are the ones that actually hit the table. And my copy of Terraforming Mars is the game in my collection that gets played the most often. From me, other players at local events. I can't remember the last time I brought that out to a local game store and I didn't teach someone to play or someone didn't grab my copy to go play it. So my number one game out of the board game heap, top 100 is Terraforming Mars. Yeah. So many great games, and I have to say, and honestly, this is all thanks to Mo and his collection, <laughs> I've played a lot more of them than I had expected when I first got this assignment. Again, we talked about how we were concerned that, you know, was I actually going to have uh, a game in every one of these hundred mm-hmm. lists? Um, and, you know, with Terraforming Mars, uh, Terra Mystica, Clans of Caldonia, yeah. all in this top 50, how can you go wrong? And I have to say, Orléans was even on my, almost there for me. I've only yep. played it a few times, and I'm not normally that Euro heavy mm. gamer type, but it was really fun. Like, yeah. that was the game where I'm like, okay, maybe I could be a Euro player because I really dug that game. Um, I wish it was available on BGA because oh, we yeah. would probably have a game of that going all the time. But... I felt, I don't know, maybe guilty that I, I wasn't deck building enough. Uh, I have to say the game that my kids are more interested in playing right now over Hogwarts Battle, thank you, Monster Box and Monsters, is uh. Clank, the deck building game. And so that's what came in as number one on my list. Yeah, I mean, I am a big fan of Clank, though a bunch of these other games from here are above it, but it's definitely up there. Yep. It deserves anything in the top 100. And I got to say, I, at Board Game Geek Ratings, take them or leave them. You know what? This was fun. I actually had a lot of fun going through this list, more than I expected. It was one of those, I kind of mentioned it to Sean, and then Sean started putting stuff in chat. And I'm like, oh, he's actually doing it right now. Because <laughs> I just asked him if he could find one, and instead of just like, yeah, yeah, I can find one on every list. So then I started doing it, and then we ended up with the the earliest completed show notes for our show i think ever because of that yep. so that that was it we we went through the it was fun like like if you didn't do this while playing along while we were doing it take the time go on board game geek grab the top thousand go through it and pick one game from every hundred that you think is the best on the list no judgment on anyone else's list no no say ah oh, that's rated wrong don't go in and start giving things ones that are too high and tens that are too low just compare what's there to your personal preference pick out the game of your choice and you may discover uh some interesting things going through and, and, and you get to those hard to do right like how do I compare telestrations? I I forget what's in the same group, and I don't feel like scrolling up. But how do I compare telestrations to uh, Clans of Catalonia? Like like they're so different. And I'm like, well, if it's three in the morning at Extra Life, I want to play telestrations. Yep. If it's you know, I just cracked a coffee and we're about to start a ten hour gaming marathon. I played a warm up game. Now I'm ready to go. Then it's going to be Orleans or yep. Clans of Catalonia or whatever. Well, I mean, and yeah, then you know, telestrations was up against War Chest. 
yeah. like Pulsar 2849. Yeah. And the, I mean, <laughs> the, the, wow. There's your range of games. <laughs> yeah, you know, you've got you've got that quick quick fun party game versus the I'm going to spend three or four hours playing a yep. deep game. It's And uh, then in, in the middle of the abstract two-player thinky brainy yeah. strategy game too. Which is again, another quick one, but heavy thought, you know? Yes. Yes. All right. Well, that's it for our walkthrough of the top 1,000 games on BGG. Picking one game out of each 100 that are our favorites. Now let's head over to the lobby and see what they thought of our list and see what some of their favorite games are from the Board Game Geek Top 1,000. All right, lobbyists, were you playing along? Let's see some of your top 10 lists. So I've got a few that post, uh, from folks who posted earlier in the Discord. Uh, I'm going to go through these a little quickly because there's a lot of people here and everyone's got an opinion. That's awesome. So I, I love this, but we don't want to take all night. Uh, if we go with uh, Courtney, we've got uh, Raccoon Tycoon coming in at number 10. I have heard good things about that. Call to Adventure. Wasteland Express Delivery Service, Century A New World, Valeria Card Kingdoms, Venus. Ding, ding, ding. I need the bell. Newton, which uh, I guess they, they, I saw mentioned in the chat room, is a real sort of under, unknown uh, sort of uh, standout. Tapestry, Hansa Teutonica, and Scythe. Ooh. Hansa Teutonica is so good. So good. There's some great games on that list. I know you weren't a fan of Wasteland. Wasteland's one I really liked, but, I, but you know what? You were so new to the hobby gaming then, and we were playing with a player who checked out right at the beginning. I I, I should get I, I and I think I've even said I need to give that another chance. Yeah. Um, I, I really didn't enjoy it. It was a yeah. really bad experience, and I it's one of those things where it's not a bad game. It, it's a bad experience. Yeah. It could be a good game, and and maybe I don't like it, but. Yeah, that was a really bad experience of the game. No, totally fair. All right, who's next? Next up, we have Brian Kurtz. Uh, coming in at number 10, Ghost Fighting Treasure Hunter. Hell yeah. There we go. Which he learned about from the bellhop. Uh, Quirkle, Pictomania, yep. Blockus, oh, that's a good one. Dixit Journey, Catan, Mice and Mixsticks, Mysterium, Ticket to Ride, and Patchwork. Nice. That is a good series of games. Absolutely. There. Very Definitely. solid. And you know what? I, to be f fair, I think a lot of people probably have Catan coming in at that number five spot. <laughs> I was surprised. Well, Deanna noted the same thing. She was surprised how low Catan is nowadays. But I know there's yeah. a lot of people that hate on it lately. So, yeah, no, absolutely. And again, it's, it's uh, yeah, and even stuff like like Blockus being down at the 600 to 700 seems a little low. But again, I, again, I wonder if it's it's the gatekeeping. Right. Yep. It's the 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 players who are like, oh, that's a mass market game. I want to rate that a one. And I, at some point also, there's just too many games. You know, if there Boy, are yeah. a thousand great games, you can't fit them all into the top 100. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go through Deanna's list here. So Angie Games, our moderator, my wife in the 10th spot. She's got 1812, the invasion of Canada. Oh, you've got them broken up. Okay. Oh, she did everybody's. She did everyone's together. Oh, there's a different oh, wow. way we can present it. Do we want to start over? Uh, I, I don't even, I can't, uh, that one, that's actually kind of hard for me to read. Um, the way it's all piled in there together. Um, all right. So she is going to break it up. Sorry about that interruption. Sarah. So here's the NS. So 1812, the invasion of Canada. Fantastic block war game. Quirkle. But I almost had it on my own list. Core Worlds, there we go. We agreed on that one, though I know she was close to picking Attica. Uh, <laughs> Reef, next. Valeria Card Kingdoms, lots of Valeria love here tonight. Emotep, she agrees with you on that one. Uh, St. Petersburg, though she went with the first edition, which is actually ranked higher than the reprinting, which I don't know if that's just... Uh, I, I think that's more of a, at the time it came out, it was really good. So it got a lot of tens, whereas the new edition's better, but no one wants this crusty old game. I think you got some of that going on there. Um, she agreed with me on Alien Frontiers. I wasn't expecting that one. We've got Castles of Mad King Ludwig, one that I felt should have been on my list somewhere, but there was something else that beat it out. Oh, Shogun. That's right. It was compared to Shogun. Sorry, Castles. Right. And while she agreed with me on Terraforming Mars. Nice. Right. And uh, we've also got uh, Major Kayla, Danielle, in, has another one in our uh, Discord. Yep. She has uh, Suro, almost Machikoro, hard call, uh, Rivals for Catan, 
but very That's few she actually but very few she'd actually liked in that 800 to 900 round fair uh thunderstone thunderstone nice. and almost There's a got deck builder she almost got can't stop in there as well <laughs> uh ex libris uh for the six that is I, I have a copy of that downstairs in the in the pile of maybe maybe shame maybe put an extra life <laughs> oh and she's got adore this game in all caps on that one uh nice. betrayal at house on the hill not a big surprise yeah. there from there potion explosion dice forge oh Tak-a- dice forge i've only played on bga and it's so good takanoko yeah uh, that panda game sagrada and oh, good. Uh, and power grid uh, would would love Seventh Continent, but haven't gotten it to the table. <laughs> yeah. So I know Ryan's got us a list. Can we scroll back and find out when it started? Uh, yeah, let me just see. Because Ryan, uh, Ryan did what we asked people to see. People cheated because uh, <laughs> most of the people who gave us lists ahead of time are part of our Discord, and we kind of gave them a heads up of what we were doing tonight. So it's awesome they took part. But Ryan actually did it as we were going. Uh, I'm just sort of dropping down here to try and find out where he started. So, um, first page dream home or Kingsburg Kingsburg. There's a game. No one talks about anymore. That was one of the first dice placement games. We roll a handful of dice. You put them on spots and get stuff. Right. Uh, alien frontiers. Yes. Alien frontiers. That was on my list. Good one. Uh, where are we at? Sorry. Just, uh, trying to, Figure out where uh, Alien Frontiers, uh, Eight Minute Empire Legends. Not uh, tried that one. Zuloretto. That was one of the first hobby games I taught Sean after we reconnected after many years. Solid uh, game. Among the Stars. Oh, I was so close. One of the best drafting games. I'll take that over Seven Wonders any day. Jamaica. Nice. Uh, and uh, Port Royal. Port I, you Royal. know what? I've never tried Port Royal. I've, I've heard of it, but I have not tried it. Is that uh, all the list we so have from the chat? We've caught up. We've caught up with Ryan. So uh, <laughs> uh, Clash, Clash of Cultures. Culture. There we go. Fantastic empire building game. Rivals uh, through the ages. Feels more like Civ because you actually have a map and you actually build out and build little buildings on it. It has that more of the feel of the actual Sid Meier civilization. Right. It actually at the time was my favorite, but I need to play it again. It's been too long. Yeah, it's you know what? It's really tough. Oh, and I I did check uh Teen Titans. So you have text list. Text list should be on the Discord. Uh is it? Uh I Oh no, he posted it here in the Oh, he posted it here. Uh let me I got s- it. Oh. Found it. All right, so we got in the top or the last spot Raccoon Tycoon. Keep hearing good things. Need to try it. Grim Forest. Fantastic looking miniatures. Never tried the game. Lanterns, the Harvest Festival. I, that was definitely a short list for me. Reef, of course. Trail of House on the Hill. Everyone loves it. Just not me. Don't listen to me on that one. Camel Up. I, the, or Camel Cup, however you want to word it. Camel Up. That is a fun race game. Point Salad. There, That's a need to try. So, Kevin, uh, when we can hook up again. That's one I definitely have to try. I'm impressed to see Space Base there already because I know he just got it around the same time I did. Seems like he's loving it as much as me. Santorini, which is, of course, a great abstract strategy game with dice. And Crokinole. And I'm actually kind of surprised we don't have more Crokinole on the list, to be honest. Uh, Crokinole was a game that when I was a kid, everyone had. I think Sean had a Crokinole table. I had a Crokinole table. But it was one of those, you flipped it over and it was also a, a chess table and a checkers table. And I they had the little plastic thing i never played it I, I never knew what to do with it i remember playing around with it and then like didn't hear about crokinole for years and then all of a sudden now everyone's playing it uh and actually uh, bike guy dave formerly known as math guy dave did have his list in there but he didn't break it out different uh, the same way as everyone else so i, I skipped over it because he, he posted it all on one line uh <laughs> okay <laughs> so he's got warhammer quest call to adventure Nice. Dungeons and Dragons Castle Ravenloft. A lot of um, dungeon crawl adventure games there. Among the Stars. Oh, Valeria Card Kingdoms. There we go. Queen Domino. Mystic Vale. Above and Below. And he notes nice. these are getting hard. Carcassonne. <laughs> and Jaws of the Lion with a question mark there to uh, wrap it up. Jaws of the Lion's a good one. It I, is. I, I, you know what? Hey, Gloomhaven, it's too much compi- commitment. So what Deanna is doing is she's throwing in the chats everyone's answers together, which is really cool. Yep. What, what's interesting to see how many, like we have three people picked Reef. So I'm going to go back to Deanna's original. Let's see how many overlaps we have here. <laughs> uh, do we have, no, that's D's only. Here we go. So going back to 901, I'm looking for duplicates. So we have three votes 
for uh, Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunter. So our number 10 for overall, all bellhop fans, the lobbyists all put together, assuming D got everyone here, she may not have, <laughs> is Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunter. Second would be Raccoon Tycoon with two votes. Then everything else was single people. Yep. So, so Ghost Fight and Treasure Hunters wins that one. Then that's Deanna's list. I am scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. 800 to 900. Um, Call to Adventure has two. So it looks like Call to Adventure is the one duplicate we have in that. Which, that's another one. Um, we had a local gamer was bringing it out to game nights all the time, and I didn't get to do it. Uh, two for Quirkle as well. So Quirkle had two as well. So tie between Call to Adventure and Quirkle. Uh, I thought we had two can't stops. We uh, no, through. there was a, I, I picked can't stop and someone else had it as a second. Okay. So in the, the 800 to 700, we didn't have any duplicates at all. So but I thought we had two core worlds. Someone much mentioned it. No repeat. I'm, I'm awesome to see Pictomania on there. That is, that is the gamers version of win, lose or draw. It's so good. Core World is one of those games that I need to play more with you to get. I've I've played it, but it was kind of we we played it it's, and we rushed we rushed it a little bit. And, yeah, and I need to the problem get a it, feel for it. The problem with the learning curve on that one is it's long. It's like a three four hour game. Yeah, so you don't get that play it multiple times. Yeah, uh, six to seven hundred. Again, no duplicates. I don't see any duplicates in there. Oh, X Libra. No, no, no. Sorry. Reef is the six to seven in the six to seven hundred. Reef, Reef is, is in the six to seven hundred. Why am I blind? Three reefs. Yes, yes. There we go. <laughs> Three reefs. Wow, my eyes. Three reefs. There we go. Reef definitely wins the six to seven hundred. Valeria five. Card Kingdoms hands down destroys oh, the yes. five hundred to six hundred. Yeah, yes. But we have five <laughs> people or so doing Valeria. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one's done. Um, I see two Imhotep. So Imhotep is the winner for four hundred to five hundred. Mm. Three to four hundred. Uh, Looks like it's all across the board. That is all over the place. Yeah. No, that no is all over the there. place. Everyone's got a different game for that one. Uh, two to three, same thing, all across the board. Which is weird, because that's where you figure that we, you'd all pick the same ones. No, two to three, oh, two I for, also... Oh, wait, two, two for Alien, two for Frontiers. Alien Frontiers. There yep. it is, yep. There, the, we take it with that one. And then, and then one to 200, 200, is that what I just did? The no, chat scrolling, which is making it hard. <laughs> uh, I don't I, see any duplicates. No, no duplicates. All right, in the top 100... We have two terraforming Marses. Uh, yeah, just two terraforming Marses. Yeah, so, Ryan had a different set of lists. Brian also had a, had a lot of party games, which was interesting. And then uh, Tech did qualify that it's games he, that his kids want to play. Absolutely, there's, there's which a is lot fair. Of different ways to pick games on this list. And again, there were a couple a couple of those groupings where it's like if I'd been sort of feeling different moods mm. and, and picking on different moods, I would have gone the different way. Uh yeah. Zaya wouldn't have been picked uh you know necessarily. Yeah. So there's a lot a lot there. No, that definitely. And this is why every anytime this is why one reason we don't always do top 10 lists in general. But like when I did my top games of all time, I'm like, it's not my top games of all time. It's my top games are right now. Yeah. Because that's what I feel like. And that's why how I did it was if you ask me to play and what I did is I use this piece of software that compares two games. And I say, if you went to me right now and said, can you play this or this? What do you want to play? I picked the one I wanted to play. And I, the, the list ended up being very interesting to the fact Shogun wasn't even on the top. <laughs> it was like number 18 or something like that, because right. there was other stuff that at the time I was just like, oh, no, that sounds fun. Let's do that. Right. So, yeah, Deanna went with games she wants to play the most. Right. Like, ooh, nostalgia. When's the last time we played that was a big factor for her. Right. Wow, Ryan's played less than 10% of the top 1,000, which is fair. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I was shocked by how many I did play. Yeah, Brian Kurtz with, with the Marie Kondo, the, the What Spark Joy. I, I was tempted to just go with the, the most played. Like the, the, but then you, you would have had Blockus. You would have had um, Ingenious would have been on the list because we used to play it with the kids all the time. It's a brilliant yeah. Nizia abstract game. Um, Quirkle would have been on the list. Like it would have been a very different one. All right. The yeah. Sea Otter stream. <laughs> oh, someone, no, someone, this someone's is... checking out behind me, I guess. I don't know. Oh, I've got, okay. I've got, my, I've got my otters behind. Me. Oh, that's that's what's going okay, on. I've got All a right. stuffed. I've got I've got the otter sign. I've got the stuffed otter back here. No, no, fair. All yes, right. Sean. Sean collects otters. If you're ever <laughs> looking for a gift for Sean, send something otterific. Uh, All right, I think we're good. Uh, first, day, this was awesome. Thank you, everyone who took part. That was a lot of fun. 
like just doing it ourselves was fun. I thought it was really cool. How many of you took part? I definitely appreciate that and keep them coming, right? Like this is going to go live on Tuesday. We'll have um, a version of this particular segment up on Sunday on Sunday, Saturday, Sunday, Saturday, 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 Saturday on YouTube. So if you're listening to it there, if you listen to the auto podcast or you see a post on Twitter with this reply with your top 10, I would love to see them. Maybe we'll read them off next week. I'm not going to promise anything. We'll see. It depends how many we get and how good those lists are. No, every game pick tonight was valid in great games. Thank you for taking part. You got anything before I close this out? No, I think that was a fantastic uh, experiment and experience with all of our lobbyists. All right. Remember, if you got a game or game night question for us, head over to the website, click on ask the bellhop. 